Okay. Hi, my name is Dr. Richmond Lowe and I'm the fish vet. Today I've been called out to, to examine a couple of goldfish because they've got lumps growing on their bodies. LJ is the big guy or the big girl uh, in, in white. Uh, she's got a lump growing on, his, on her tail fin and Golly has got a lump on, on his bad side so it's just, she's just showing you her good side. Uh, so have a closer look here. Um, there's a, a pretty massive lump on near her caudal peduncle, near the base of her tail. A lot of people ask me what causes these sort of lumps or growths or tumours on fish. Uh, there's not a lot known about them. Uh, the most studied one is carp pox, which is a herpes virus that can cause a waxy type growth of their on the skin and, and they do look quite different to these. Uh, the ones that you can see here, they look more lumpy and a lot meatier and they do project above the skin surface a lot more than what you would expect in a carp pox lesion. Now the one on LJ, that's going to be a fairly simple procedure to remove. Basically we're going to anesthetize her and then remove the fin ray just before where the growth starts and then the fin should regrow and heal up very simply without any complications. However, with Golly here, her tumour is at the base of the tail and that location is very vascular so one of the things we have to look out for is the possibility of um, complications resulting from inability to maintain uh, hemostasis in terms of she may continue to bleed and, but we've got a few ways that we can stop the bleeding. Uh, one is uh, applying digital pressure with a cotton swab. Uh, the next is to then use electrocautery to sort of burn and sear the blood, the ends of the blood vessels so that they, they form a seal. Uh, then the alternative is to use ferric chloride as a chemical means of hemostasis. So we'll see what we need to do there. Um, I've explained to the owner that it is a fairly risky procedure uh, just from the location of it but it is something that we have to do. Uh, Golly here is 10 years old so she's only halfway maybe through her midlife crisis but uh, if, if you watch her swim you can uh, start to see that this lump is weighing her down and it's just going to keep growing and it's going to cause buoyancy disorder if we leave it uh, for too long. So in terms of removal of this tumour, what we're going to do is we're going to, instead of trying to remove the entire lump straight away in one go, we're going to do a slice through the tumour, through the middle of it, just to see how good we can get the hemostasis. If it doesn't continue to bleed too much, uh, then it's a good sign that it's not a very vascular tumour and that we can then go a bit deeper and try and get the whole lump. You'll notice that on the side, on the same side of Golly, on, on her right hand side, there's a patch there on her abdomen where it's, uh, it's got deep pigmentation where it's white and that's the site where we originally removed a different lump uh, but now she's uh, grown another lump. So um, I guess in terms of how she heals, how the body heals, normally when we remove the lump, uh, the area that's sort of damaged or removed uh, when it heals up uh, you may get sort of color differences um, not quite the original but uh, maybe just yeah non-pigmented area okay so next thing is we're uh, going to set up our anesthetic solution one with anesthetic in it we're going to use alfaxlone at five milligrams per liter and then we're going to have some fresh water that's collected from the tank uh, in terms of if we need to dilute out or make her go lighter or, and also to revive her. Um, so that's our second solution. All right, so to prepare the anesthetic solution, we've got six liters here. We're going to use 0.75 mils of alfaxalone and just squirt that into the water. Let it stir so that it's well mixed. All right, so here is Golly, and it's in the same anesthetic solution, and you notice that these becoming anesthetized. In catching golly with the soft net, you can see that uh, we've already caused a little bit of trauma. There's a little bit of hemorrhage on, on that lump. So this is going to be a very vascular 
type of tumor so I guess the, the risk of bleeding is a lot higher um, than what was previously operated on so you can see she's lost her writing reflex and we're just going to test for pain sensation so there's no evidence of pain sensation so Ngali is what uh, I guess is more typical to the textbook of how fish would respond to anesthesia all right so now we're gonna put Ngali onto the surgery table we'll be irrigating intermittently with the anesthetic solution and if she's going too deep then we'll irrigate with the fresh water so what I'm doing here is I'm going to take a tiny bit of the surface of the tumor off first just to see uh, how much the tumor is going to bleed and also get a feel of the texture. It's very friable, indicating that it's um, it can break very easily. So a tumor like this is going to likely cause him some pain every time he knocks it because it's just going to break. So I can see it bleeds quite a lot, and so have to be take some care and gonna cut it off as quickly as I can, uh, and then start applying hemostasis to prevent him from bleeding out. You can see it's welling up with blood uh, at the site with where we've removed the tumor. Now we're going to put some digital pressure uh, on there to, to stop the bleed and also to soak up any of the blood so that when we apply this electrocautery, which basically cuts and sears the capillaries, it will help to stop the bleed. So I'm just mopping up the excess blood so that we can see pinpoint the blood vessel that we need to seal with our electrocautery. Now it's going a bit light in this anesthetic level, so we're going to give him some more anesthetic solution through his mouth to pass over the gills and get him back into the surgical plane of anesthesia. So we're just going to keep doing this until you can see his respiratory rate or his, the way it, it slows down. I'm going to continue with the hemostasis. Uh, it seems that it just keeps bleeding. Next, we're going to apply cryosurgery to the site because the scalpel blade uh, cannot get to the deeper parts of the of the tumor and we want to be able to kill off the roots of the tumor so how how this works is that it um, freezes all the soft tissues that contain a lot of fluid a lot of um, water it's going to create ice crystals within the cells and the ice crystals will cause damage to the tumor cells uh, it's not specific to the tumor, it's just basically all the soft tissues around there. And it's going to break through the cell membranes as the crystal forms and thaws. We have to get rid of all traces of the tumor tissue uh, so, that we, so that it does not come back, it doesn't grow back. You can see moisture from the air condensing around the applicator sponge appears as frost. Now we're getting some more bleeding. So I'm just applying digital pressure on the wound. I'm going to go again with our electrocautery to find the blood vessel that we need to sear. When applying electrocautery, just basically just quick 
dabs onto the site because we don't want to cause too much thermal damage to the tissues around it. That should be more of a white looking tissue, did you say? should be a red tissue, oh, red yeah, tissue. more like a... Do you think that means it'll grow back or it just won't have... Um, possibly it may grow back, but I've done the freeze yeah. to get the deeper tissues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's 65 grams. She's 65 and the other one's 340. <laughs> Here I'm injecting some painkillers, flunixin at half a milligram per kilogram body weight. Really sorry that I'm putting my hand over there. You can't quite see it, but I'm, I'm holding him still so I can inject into the musculature at the base of its pelvic fins. The second injection there was anrofloxacin, just to give it some antibiotic coverage because there is a, a huge wound that we've created. He's sort of waking up from anesthetic, but uh, we've already got the anti-inflammatory on board uh, so he's, he's just flicking his tail because he's wanting to wake up at this stage we won't give him any more anesthetic because uh, we want him to recover fully from the anesthetic quickly we're just applying our fish bandage now just very light layers of our fish bandage plus the antibiotic which is uh, anrofloxacin just mixed diluted with a bit of water we're just applying that topically here and allowing the powder from the fish bandage to absorb it so now he's ready to go back into his recovery tank which is just plain water with no anesthetic in it once he wakes up from here sufficiently we'll put him back into the main tank so that's our surgery done for LJ and Dolly. Um, LJ is fully recovered from her anaesthetic. The complication we had with Golly's tumour was that it was very well vascularized, and there were about three blood vessels that were very difficult to, to stop from bleeding. And eventually we, we managed to uh, by a combination of using saturated potassium permanganate on a swab uh, and also ferric chloride and Electrocordary. Um, so, I guess uh, different blood vessels needed sort of the different types of treatments, um, and we had to go in and stop the bleeding uh, a few times, and eventually we, we reapplied that fish bandage uh, that's on there. Now, the recovery period. I guess what we can do is we can add um, salt to the water at about two grams per liter. Uh, that would reduce any osmoregulatory stress from the open wound that we've got on Dolly, and also we'll add vitamin C to the tank at 10 milligrams per liter, and this will help with tissue repair and collagen synthesis, so that way you get the wound uh, repairing a lot quicker. And also the vitamin C is a good immunostimulant, uh, a good, um, vitamin C is good for the immune function, and so this will sort of fend off any secondary bacterial infections. Uh, that would occur. We've also given Golly some antibiotics uh, topically as well as an uh, injectable, parenterally, and we've also given her some anti inflammatories because that's a pretty big uh, scar there. Okay, so we'll just wait for her to wake up and then we'll be on our way. Right, so that's all from me, LJ, and Golly. Uh, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to get updates of our future videos and have a fantastic week.